G'day, I'm Steve Hay. Welcome to Woodworking Masterclass. Ah, oh, I just did a short stream, but something went wrong, so I've had to start again, so it doesn't matter. What I'm going to do today is I've got some glue-ups to do. I've got some um, beehive bottoms and tops to put together. I've been asked to put together some hives to help regenerate the bee population in the bush after the floods that we've had. So I'm going to glue those together. Not as flash and fancy as the ones that I did do, but they're still going to be made out of good wood and they're going to be good um, for the bees and good for the environment. I've got that to do and I'm just going to pop the chat out here and we'll see how we go. There we go. Now we're back. And I want to try a new way of filling cracks because I've... Um, been presented with a challenge that not normal wood filling fillers can deal with. So I've got an idea behind that. And I've got a couple of leather strops to make, so I'll see if I can get those done as well. Oh, dear oh dear. So if you were in the chat room before, I'm sorry, but please come back in and I hope you can join us. All right, first things first, let me get some paper down. G'day, Jared. How are you? Oh, thanks, mate. Yeah, I don't know what happened there. It was one of those gremlin type situations. But I have got it fixed now, so it's all good. This is just ordinary baking paper that I use. When Coles have it on special, I buy it by the carton. Works out quite inexpensive that way. All right, this is so I don't get glue all over my bench. Oh, oh then I've got the air conditioner on, as you can tell, and it's blowing it everywhere. All good, no matter. Christina, <laughs> thank you so much. G'day, Roy. Mate, good to have you on board. I hope you're doing well. Nice to hear from you. G'day, T-Bone. How are you, Daryl? Oh dear, oh dear. What, what a day. I'm, I look, I'm not embarrassed to show you my shed. Hang on, I'll just, I'll just flick this one on. Give you a quick walk around. Just don't worry about this pile of rubbish over here because um, that's all going to be the beehives that I'm doing. So that'll all go. Look, router table's clean. No sawdust. Oh, I've got to tell you, it, it is a joy to walk around. What have we got over here? Even that's all clean. That saw's clean. And I can even open that door later on, and it's clean. So I've got to be happy. It's been two and a bit days, and um, there was so much timber there, I've decided to give it away. The, the offcuts, I mean, I'm burning a lot of offcuts, but, oh, wait a minute. Ah. But um, it's some really nice timber too that I didn't want to burn. So I put uh, an ad up on the local Facebook page and someone's coming to collect it all, which is wonderful. Oh. It's so nice to be able to walk around. Don't know how long it'll stay like that, but at the moment, at the moment, it's looking all right. Uh, okay. Oh, Vinny, good day, mate. I got that spare forcing a bit so I can file the centre pin off. Yeah. Mate, it'll work well, and if it's clean, it'll give you a nice, clean side as well. That's for your scented candles, if I remember correctly. So it will work well. Louise, good afternoon. How are you? I was, I was going to give you a call, but I never got around to it. We'll see if we can catch up next week, if you want. Can you get up to Springfield? No. Not that'll do me much good, but we, we can organise something. Um, yeah, 
yes, it's wonderful. It's concrete. I didn't know what sort of floor I had, whether it was dirt, concrete, or just suspended. Don't be rude. <laughs> oh, dear, oh, dear. Bill from Tennessee. Well, g'day. Bill, welcome to the workshop, mate. Steve from Australia, Brisbane in Australia, saying g'day to you. And thanks for dropping in. Okay. Now, I'm going to glue these up and try and do it with a minimum of mess. This is um, Western Red Cedar I've got here. Oh, what did I do to the glue? I'm sitting on it almost. There you go, here we go. Okie dokie. Now I did have, I did have, I did have a brush I was going to brush it on with. If I can't find it all. Oh, look at that. I think I found one. Yay. Oh, dear, oh, dear. It's going to be easier to brush it on. Make a bit of water on there. Oh, dear. Here we go. Boom, boom, boom. Yeah, yeah, you got no idea the stuff I found when I cleaned the shit up there. Oh, I wonder where that was. Oh, I was going to go and buy another one of those. Oh, that's good. And then the chickens came in and decided they quite liked it, so they were playing around for a bit. I had to hunt them out. But it's all good. Boom, 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 boom. Oh, I don't reckon you can ever use too much glue. This is um, Type Bond 3 I'm using, but I have watered it down if you can see it's a lot runny than it normally is. And that just means I've got a little bit more gluing time. <sighs> yeah, that would be a good idea. Only trouble is, Vinny, if I did it, I'd, I'd use them today and then tomorrow I'd go, oh, what are they for? And I'll throw them away because I'm like that. Uh, the amount of templates that I've picked up that I've obviously spent a lot of time doing and for a job, I picked them, what was that for? Luckily, luckily the important ones I do um, mark what it is and I generally put the date that I've made it. And if I make several templates... I'll give it a number. Oh dear. Hang on, Louise, I'll be with you in a tick. I found a lathe too. <laughs> Me big lathe, you couldn't see it for rubbish. But I like using my little one best. Okay, that's the first lock that can go down. Oh, I'm just going to leave them down there for the moment. Providing I can get 200 out of these on 
happy. Boom, boom, boom. Or, or 190. Because they come down a bit less than that. Yeah, that's 195. That will do just fine. Ah, oh, Louise, don't worry, my room is a big site at the moment. Um, yeah. Well, mine's tidy, so I'm going to brag. <whistles> G'day, Lawrence. Welcome to the workshop. Thanks for dropping in. Just in the process of doing the glue up. Then I'm going to have a go at a different idea for filling gaps in timber and then I'm going to make a couple of strops. I'll make one from scratch and whilst I was cleaning up I did find one that I'd cut up already and somebody asked me for one last week so I thought well I might as well use this one that I've already cut up. Boom, 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 boom. I don't advise doing what I'm doing here with full strength glue because it will be going off before you get a chance to clamp it up but it's fairly heavily watered so it should be okay. That's not to say you can dilly dally, it'll be reasonably prompt. It's been a while, yeah, it has, Lawrence, for you and me too. It's nice to be back into it, though. Okay, I know what I'll put in here. Just so I don't come a cropper. Okie dokie. One more lot and we're done. Job well done. I even clean the screens off that I look at. <laughs> so, so I'd be going like this because I thought I had something on the face, but it was a TV screen. <laughs> Mark all over it. It's all good now, though. Gunk in there. Oh. There we go. Some things I um, am careful when I glue, but this stuff it doesn't matter because they're way oversized, so they're going to be resawn and machined down. To the size I want them. 
And I don't reckon you can ever have too much glue. That's my theory anyway. Okay, here we go. Got one more over there. There we go. Hold me mouth the right way. We should be good. Oh, you Egypt. Pin came out. <laughs> Away and thinking, it's funny, it's not holding. But that was why it wasn't holding. Come on, there you go, there you go. Okay, I'll just move. Back once. There we go. All good. Wonderful. Be with the chat in a tick. Just want to get this sorted. Come on. Come on. Normally I wouldn't put this second clamp on, but I haven't got a, a cleat bar on the other end. So it's just to spread the load out. Okie dokie. One to take off the list. Let's put 
put a bit of paper down on the floor so the glue can drip on the paper instead of the concrete. I've got to show you, look at these, these are just the prettiest colours. Oh. Just before I went on, I went and picked my eggs up. Just look at the colours in that. They are just gorgeous. All sorts of different colours. We've got pinks and whites and browns, um, almost a purple in some of them, mauvey sort of colour. Oh, they're clever chooks. They're spoilt rotten, but they're clever chooks. Okay, now I've, got to, I've just got to go and put these somewhere so I don't drop them. Because Sue would not be happy. There you go, they can go there. Oh, okay. Let me just wash my hands a bit. Mm. Ah. Da -da -da. Oh. All right, I'll be with you all in a tick. Let's get this sticky stuff off. And I must have an allergic reaction to. <laughs> I've got a allergic reaction to hard work. Um, some timber, because, oh, crikey, I've come out in. Big, really, really itchy red welts. And I know some timbers I'm allergic to. And uh, when I was cleaning all the dust and muck out from under the machines and everywhere, I think there might have been a bit of that there, and it zapped me. But anyway... All good, okay, where are we up to? Let me go up here. Louise, gee whiz, you have been busy. Uh, okay, we got Lawrence, been a while? Yes, it has. Um, uh, thanks, Lawrence. Louise, I don't know about next weekend, I have to check everyone's schedule. I'm so looking forward to Isabel getting her license. I thought she got it. Well, there you go. All the best, Isabel. Your mum wants you to get it, but I bet you you want to get it more. <laughs> oh, dear. Uh, me too, it's a lot of the little things, but they see <laughs> that's true. Little things have big prices. How much water are you adding to that? Oh, mate, look, I don't know. It, it really is just a splash. It's not like turning the tap on. Um, they say you can dilute it by 10%, but I doubt if it was 10%. No, it wouldn't be. Um, I don't know. I, I, just, I just sort of splash it in, but whatever that container is there, uh, it wouldn't even be that full. And it, it breaks down pretty quickly. So, yeah, I wouldn't like to be using 10%. By the time I've got a wet brush and put it on there, it, it could possibly be up there. But sometimes all it means, instead of taking that off tonight, I'll leave it for 24 hours till the glue's dry, but it's, it's all good. And they, they were cluttering up out there, so it's nice to have those done too. Oh, dear, oh, dear. Um, hey Steve, hey Steve, I'm talking to myself now. G'day Alan, how are you mate? Oh, I made some cucumber bread the other day. Yeah, very nice. Cucumbers are going crazy at the moment. Good. Um, T-bone type bond three is made with a longer opening time. But then, yeah, I, I, don't, I don't trust it. I like to know I've got heaps of time. Um, on the holiday at the moment, another week to go. I hope to spend all next week in the workshop. Good. How'd you go in the rain? Did you get um, 
flooded underneath or you're pretty right there, Alan? Ah, oh, dear. <whistles> Been trying to get some purple poplar up for some of my work. Oh, it's purple poplar. I haven't seen purple poplar. I've got uh, aromatic cedar, which is nice and purple. But I haven't seen purple in poplar. That would look nice. We have a very similar one to poplar here called black heart sassafras. Um, it's a lot dearer than poplar. But yeah, it's, it's nice to work, poplar, I must admit. G'day, Jim. Oh, you have got the soggies today. Yeah, we're, we're starting to dry out now, thank goodness. Well, I've been looking at a couple of your posts and I agree with you. Sounds like another person, but I'm going on. Okay. Uh, <laughs> you got a mean streak in you, Vinny, haven't you? Hey, the bloke, bloke does the right thing, or the cop's criticism. Oh, honestly, it was bad. When I'm falling over and tripping over things, I know it's time to clean the shed up. G'day, Ben! Six knots, how are you, mate? How's many knots? G'day, Trevor. Mate, you've got road issues up there, I believe. And Brenda, good afternoon, or good morning. All right, now, um, I said I'm going to, I'm just going to, I've got some glue on my bench, and it's annoying me. Oh. Um, I'm just going to clean these dags off. Um... Yeah, I did some, or was asked to do some things a while back, and I had to fill the cracks in the, the timber. It was just natural timber and with, um, you know, with movement and changing in temperature and humidity, you get little checks and cracks and what have you. And so I filled them with uh, wood putty, which you've all seen me do many, many times. And um, some actually submerged a piece of wood that shouldn't have been submerged did. And because it was a water-based putty, it um, basically melted, uh, dissolved. So I was asked, can I come up with something a bit different that would be waterproof? So I thought about it and I thought, why not try some shellac? So I thought, we'll give it a burl. And I'll show you what I'm talking about. These cracks here. Where are we? There you go. These cracks here. Um, fill. And I want to fill it with some powder. So you can get, I will show you, I've got that out here. But it's an expensive way of Doing, oh, it's lovely to be out here and not trip over stuff. And <laughs> you don't know where stuff is. What a bonus. Oh, the only, only downside about going out there is it's not air conditioned. It's nice and air conditioned in here. So you can get these, uh, which are shellac filler sticks. And they come in a range of colours. Which but because I've got this dark timber, I'm just a dark colour. And if you don't want to spend the money buying a box of those, you use one or two colours anyway. What I thought of was 
if you can get hold of some button lac. And there's, there's so many different types of shellac. There's garnet lac, there's ordinary gold shellac, there's dewax wax blonde, there's lemon blonde, uh, black shellac that is generally in a um, liquid form. And there's button lac. Uh, there's another one I can't think of. But anyway, there's a few to keep going. This is button lac. I guess you could use it with shellac as well. Oh. But this is called button lac for a very good reason because it's the shape of little buttons. And then you break it up and you melt it the same way as ordinary gold shellac, but shellac comes in flake form and it'll melt overnight. This stuff can take three or four days, maybe a week to melt, depending what sort of what you're using. So, let's give it a go. I've thought of a couple of ways we could do it. Um, and we'll try both ways, there you go. Now, I don't want to burn the fingers. So I'll get a pair of tweezers. first method I'm going to do is I might just tape it off actually, see if it makes any difference. I don't know if this is going to be a good thing or a bad thing. I could de-stress the ends by dropping the drill in there, but I don't really want to. And what I thought would be, a um, couple of ways you can do it. I'm going to use the big way first, we'll see how it goes, and I've got a more delicate way of doing it. So let me just have a thing here. That's a lot more complicated getting your license than before, isn't it? Well, I'm talking 50 years ago. Oh, crikey. It would be. It would be over 50 years ago. Oh, crikey. I can remember. Had to do a three-point turn in a narrow street in Sydney. Yeah, Silky, don't... You know, Australian cedar gets me, Trevor. Um, and also Queensland maple. And I know there was a lot of maple dust around there. I was turning a lot of... New Guinea rosewood, but that generally doesn't affect me. Um, but yeah, who knows? But anyway, it'll settle down, it'll settle down. Had about a centimetre through the shop, but had time to get everything off the floor, so no real issues. With the epoxy four, it takes a lot longer to dry out. <laughs> I guess it would. Mm. Now, what did I see the other day? I saw something the other day, T-Bone. Um, it was marquetry. Now, I don't know if this will work in popular, and to be honest, I haven't tried it myself. But I saw a guy doing some marquetry, and he was using Purple Heart. And he put some lemon juice. I'm pretty sure he brushed... brushed some lemon juice on the purple heart and he said that will maintain the colour. So I don't know. I just saw someone and that's what they said. I'll, I'll try it. I'll try I've got some purple heart over there. I think I've got some purple heart in here too. So I will try it one day, but hey, try it on Poplar, see if it works. Ah. Uh. Oh, <laughs> might have got a few for sale here if you want one. <laughs> I've got a huge old Hafco one. I've got a 
Half, uh, is that not another one, a halflinger? Oh. <laughs> Starts with H. Anyway, yeah. So if he wants to do, get scroll saw work, there you go. Got a couple here. Ah, uh, um. Duncan, g'day! G'day from the UK! And Craftsman Studio, hi! Alright, so the first thing on that, now this, this, this seems really stupid, but I can't find my zipper. I don't know where it is, it's somewhere. So what I want to do is, I want a targeted flame. So I'm going to... Use this one to light this one, because this one, the, the flames, as you can see, is too big for what I want. It'll go everywhere. And this one's got a nice small flame, but I had to light that with this. A bit like catching a cab to take you to your car, isn't it? So I've got a very, very small flame on that. Let's see. And I'm going to hold this with a pair of tweezers. And I don't want that much flame. So here we go. Here it is, starting to melt. Turn that up, we'll rip the paper off before it dries. Throw that away. That seems to have done a reasonable job. So that's using uh, propane. So I said the map, too hot and flames too wide, but I needed that to light that. And the other method, you can, um, I would imagine, use a soldering iron. I've actually got a pyro pen, but it would, should be the same method, I think. It's not as quite as dramatic as using the propane torch, and I can use much smaller bits, as you can tell. I'll turn that on. And in a minute, we might just flick this camera over to this one. Boom, ba -dum, boom. There you go. We'll go to that one. And we'll see how we go with this. So I'm going to fill these cracks here. Again, it's button lac. Um, could use garnet lac. Oh, I suppose what you could do quite easily would be put, um, make some sticks up yourself. Get some golden shellac and uh, melt it and then Wait until it forms into a block. And then you can do exactly what I'm doing here. But I find most timbers you want something dark in there. Dark timbers, are, um, dark filler is better than light. And as I've said many times before, if you ever Using it, make sure you go darker than the timber you're trying to fill. Because if it's darker, 
the eye will go over it, but if it's lighter, Hegner, that's what I was thinking of, Ben. Hegner uh, scroll saw. It hasn't got the air pump on it, but it's all good. I would have a um, bigger tip on this, I think. You could, as I said, you could possibly use a soldering iron. Different picture with that nut, you don't get anything out of that. This definitely takes longer. Yeah, I, I think I would go in favour of the propane torch myself. Or maybe a bigger chip. But I think it's going to do the same job. better glasses <laughs> I can't quite see what I'm doing <sighs> that's just to let you know that I'm still here I think you had very fine hairline cracks. Always this, but if it's big things like these, I think I'll use the propane torch. One here that I'll do that with the torch in a minute. Ow. Just getting a cramp in my finger. up a bit. That was on about seven. So I'll just put it up. A couple of notches, I think it's on nine now. Okay. I might just clean this this bit up here and then put some in there and we'll see what happens. Just got to get rid of any 
loose timber that's around there. I wouldn't advise this for big gaping holes. I would actually plug those. Okay. We'll do that with the torches again. <clears throat> Here's one of the smallest tip coming out. Tweezers, and here we go. So I'm heating not exactly on the bottom, up from there, so it'll run down. So there we go. Wait until that hardens off with a couple of minutes. And um, I can do this one in the back too, or not. <laughs> Saves me doing it later on, doesn't it? I'm having good luck with masking tape, I'll tell you, I just. Oh, this one, I must admit, it got wet. Got a bit wet in the flood so if I get anything out of it it really is a bit of a bonus there we go Try a bigger flame and see what happens. Yeah, you haven't got as much control. At all. So, yeah. Like toffee apple toffee. Yep. I can definitely say with some authority, bigger flame is not a idea. As I said, showing through. Just so you can liquefy it. And that way it should just melt into the cracks. I'm really trying not to burn the timber. Okay. All right. So we'll let all that up. Then we'll come back to it and clean it off and see how it looks. 
I've, lo I've lost me pliers. <laughs> well, they're not pliers, are they? Tweezers, tweezers. That's it. <clears throat> All right, on the strops. Boom, ba -dum, boom, ba -dum, boom. Hey Daniel, how are you mate? Good to have you on board. Yeah, it depends. Um, depends what work you're going to do, Lawrence. Pinless, pinned and pinless. I I personally use pen and minor five O's or something or other. They are so thin they're ridiculous. But there is a case for um, pinned. You're going to be doing intarsia. I'd definitely go pinned because you can get a much harder solider blade in there. I'll just see if I can find the ones I use. Over here somewhere. There you go. They're the ones I use and they're so, so, so. Um, I need a, that's, <laughs> to give you an idea, There you go. 20. Um, the drill size I use is another number 70 size drill. It's only just bigger than a dressmaker's pin. Um, but if you're going to be doing heavy work, I reckon, yeah, get a pinned one. Get one with both. Most of them have both. Also, I must admit, I like a quick release and I do the foot pedal. Uh, oh, good on you, Andrew. Yeah, that's not a bad way of doing it, Duncan. Yep. That will fill the holes. I made a PSI, it's the fly fishing kit in Ante. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, one of my students just started making pens the other day. <laughs> so you gotta show me how to do no, it's enough people show you how to make pens. But she did some good ones. They they came up nice. Help if I can propane disposable top one more. What's that? Oh, I have have a propane like that, but if I hold it. Anything other than upright it cuts out. Um, yeah, give it a blowout with a compressed air, thing. You might have a blockage somewhere. I know mine sometimes does. But it's good now. I'll give it a good squirt with compressed air. Cleaned it out. Hey, what am I doing? Strops, strops. Let's do a strop. Okay, well, this is one I found that I'm going to do. And then this is, oh, this is a bit I literally had this lying around outside. So I'm going to machine that up. That sandal, that will come up a treat. But before I go that far, I tell you what, I reckon it's almost done. I'm going to draw a template and template. 
then we'll go over, we'll make a half template, then we'll go over, make a full template, then I'll machine up the sandalwood, cut it roughly on the bandsaw because I can get to the bandsaw now, then we'll router it and glue it all together. Ah. Oh, I've been cutting ovals in mirror. Oh, learning. There you go. Um, what am I doing over here? French curves, that's what I want. How big a handle do I want? Pencil. I even moved my pencil over here now. Look at that. What's that one? I'll move that saw up a little bit so I can get into my pencil sharp and the better. Okay. Just with French curve. I'm just looking for a nice. How long do I want my handle? This is freehand. Okay, so that's 30 mil across, so I'll go 15 mil. mil at the top so there's 25 and then 15 down here and a decent size handle to about there so what I shall do is Roughly draw that. That's too fat there, so we'll bring that. Back. To there, bring that around. Once I get the rough, that's starting to look at. Okay. Now what I'll do, curve. get what I'm looking for there, which is that one there, and that one there, and then I'll just pull that over the top. And I want the strop to be 90 mil. So if we come in 40 there. And I'll have it 200 long. Here. I'll find a oh, bigger square. Bring it up. And a bit of a radius in there. Only because it looks nice. And we'll knock that off. 
Well, I will go over to the band so you can come over there with me. And I'll cut that. And we'll see how close I can get. Doesn't <laughs> Go and have a look. Hang on, let me see. Oh. All right, Vinny, drive carefully. See you soon. Now, what's wrong with Andrew's bike? You driven it once. That was to pick up your planes. Would anyone like to buy my toothache going to... I don't know, I might scrub your toothache for an itchy rash. All right, let's go over the bandsaw. Good thing to do to it. Whatever you call it. Carving chisel. That's what it's called. Oh, just turn me dusty on.
Okay, there we go. I'll clean that up. Uh, yeah, go to the saw and do it all. Just might just saw it off by hand. Oh, I forgot to cut this bit off. Square. Golly, got to be coffee time in a minute. little thing here, the H&T Gordon um, spoke shave, gorgeous little thing, great for getting around tight corners. I don't think that's going to be an issue there because um, that tight little radius, it's not going to come into play when I put it over the router because I've got a, um, a bearing on the top of the router. So I should get a normal, quite a nice curve out of that. And I might just take that sharp bit off the top. Okay. That's half the template. So, now what I'll do, put enough here, have I? Just about enough. I think. If not, I'll go and get another bit. That's good enough. <clears throat> okay. Put a 
that bit on there with a bit of double sided tape. Which I believe over here, which it is. <coughs> and then rough cut it. Bandsaw. Then we'll go over to the router and <coughs> cut a profile. Yeah, I had a beautiful um, Harold and Sax purple heart and a new one, but I don't know when I'll be seeing him again. For and I think somebody needed it more than I did and borrowed it. Bit disappointing, but there you go. You get that in a big job. Okay. So now. Cut that out in the bandsaw, roughly, and we'll go over to the router. So, let me have a chat first. Um. <whistles> He's owned. Oh, that's lovely. Hot energy out to you. This is my gorgeous grandkid. Raven and Nick and Trudy, their mum. So, hello back to you. It's lovely to have contact. And I love your drawings you're doing, Ray. Keep it up, girl. Well, I suppose better, Trevor, she's painting things on rocks and throwing rocks at you. Oh, I'll get, I'll get back. I'll just cut this out and then we'll rub that um, shellac back. Candace, it's all right. Can, can aid, can aid. It's okay. I don't know how to use it either. I just come down here and stumble through. Oh, what I'm going to do with that technique um, too, if you're interested with <laughs> shellac, I'm going to take it out and put it up as a separate video, as I might do with this strop as well. Who knows? G'day, Michael. How are you? From over the ditch. Oh, good night, Ray. You have a good night, darling. Have sweet dreams. Okay, I'm going over and doing this, and then we'll be back. Half a strop for Arthur Chisel. Now I'm going to do a full one for full one. All right, let's go with the bandsaw. That's what I've got. Love the foot brake. We'll spin it around, go over to the router. If we can find it, there it is. And we'll route this. Yeah, I know, I'm on the router. Okay.
So that's been routed. What I'm going to do now is I'll take this off, turn it around, do the same, and then we've got the full template. And I, oh no, there's a different camera. I didn't know which camera I kicked. I, I could have kicked any of them. Okay. Where's the chiswell? Oh. Okay. okay. So that was that way, now I'm going to turn that that way and down that centre line, I'm going to put that there. <laughs> it looks like a butter churn, doesn't it? Doesn't matter, it's going to be good. It's going to work. It's all it's got to do. And then when I've done that, we'll... I'll machine up that timber, then we'll do the um, gizmoid on the Watson. The, the shellac. We'll see how that comes up. And I will share an interesting tip with you. Okay, there we go. I just do this to make sure I get a really nice, good, firm fit. I'll go to the bandsaw, quickly cut this out. You'll hear me, I won't spin the camera around. A hiccup there, but it's all right, we'll fix it. What I did, I didn't work it on the um, right on the bearing, so I get a bit of a dip in there, but that's okay. I'll fix that. Oh, okay, there we have. The template for a strop. So, what I think I'll do, I'll just go in and machine this. I have got a camera in there, so just bear with me and I will be back. Oh, I don't know. I don't know if this one will reach. No, it won't. It's not, is it? No, it's not long. Or oh, it might be. No, it's not long enough to lead. So I'll just quickly play ice by. I'll just go in there and machine this and then I will be back but you'll hear me talking oh. okie dokie that's the downside of um, the setup I'm using I don't use webcams anymore Just going on the jointer.
wish you could smell this stuff. It is absolutely gorgeous. That's what it looked like when it was laying outside. That's what it looks like when it's been machined. And it smells wonderful. Be back in a tick. You gotta be quick. I just opened <laughs> Come here, come on. I just I just opened the door so I could do some machining. Then look who comes in. You're a star, aren't you? Oh, you've been having a dust bath. Goodness great, look at that. Muck all over the place. Good on you, Snoop. Um, hang on, I don't know what I've got to get. Let's get that. Another bit that I had, and I'll just clean that. Bit off. Took that lump out as well. All right, so that's I just fix that up on the disc sander. That's ready to go. Let's have a go at cleaning this. Oh, and in comes the sister. Have a look at this one. They're going to fight. They do. They're siblings. And yeah, hey, you reckon these two don't look alike? Stay there. Look at that, heckle and jackal. Hey, go on, get off. Don't you dare go on my computer. Come on. Oh, you're a star now. You want to stay up here, do you? Come on. There you go. Oh, and the other one's come in. I've got three of them in here now. Goose will be in in a minute. Ah. Oh. Pascal, get home, mate. It's nice to be back. Oh, dear. Dum -ba -dum -bum -ba -dee -dum. See you, Lawrence. I'll just tell you, babysitter's here, Trevor. <laughs> oh, right. Now, what are we doing? I just all the blinking. Lucy's a lot wider. She's got a wider tail. All right. Let's just push this stuff to one side. And this is how my shop gets messy. Isn't that? You lot coming in, that's how. Um, wait a minute. Oh, you've talked me into it, I'm going to have a coffee. What do I want? Ethiopian, that's what I'll have. What? Do you want to come up too? All right, come on. No, nope, she's catching. No, nope, doesn't want it. That's Lucy. 
She's the other one. No, get away, that's my coffee. Go on, get lost. Oh, did I put that one back in? That's the one I want. Okay, that can go there, that can go there, that can go there, that can go there. Let's hang these up. See, I'm trying to get into good habits. It's not going to last for long, I don't think. Tell you what I didn't do with this one. Did not take the paper off <laughs> before it got hard. So we'll see, we'll see. Uh, there you go. So I didn't take the paper off before it went hard and that creates a bit of a problem. Not an insurmountable problem, but it would have been nicer had I taken the paper off first. That's it, I've got no more. No. You have to wait until I feed you tonight. Come on, the other way. Uh, now, what I found is if you use an orbital sander straight away on this, what it will do, the heat generated by the orbital sander will melt the shellac and that'll clog your sander. So I found a much better way, a bit of 100 grit, and then manually grind away at it. You can see it comes away fairly easily, but you can see how this clog in the paper. So it's a lot better to clog up a sheet than a sanding disc, because sanding discs are way more expensive. Okay, so I'm nearly down. I've still got a hole there. I might have to patch that up with the um, heating iron. Now that's pretty close to being flat. I will put a power sander over it. Reasonably new disc. Come on, out. I'm gonna get rid of these flipping chickens. Right, so we've still got a little bit to fill in. And there's a couple of little dots here. And what I'll do is I'll use this for that. I'm just going to chase these chickens out. Come on, out. Come on, out. 
Yep, yep, yep. Come on. Good girl. Here you go. Come on. Where's your mate? Oi, Karen, come here. Come on. You too. Come on. No, you would go over there. Come on. Out. Out, 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 out. No. Do not pass go. Do not pick up two hundred dollars. Come on. Let's go. Oh, I've got one more here. She's a ringing. This one won't let me pick her up though, I don't think. No, she won't. Come on. Come on. Oh, that's it. I'll just put up with them. The black one's come in. Tell ya. Show of one piece of kindness. What? You go? What? This is. This one's beautiful too. She. She. Yeah. You're a star. Did you know that? You're a star. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Good. All right. Here you go. She doesn't normally come into the shed. Um, all right, so let's get some shellac. What do I do with it? Mm. And we'll just do these real small little holes here. And that should be all good then. As I said, if, if there was a large area to do, I would um, really be inclined to drill it out and put a plug in there. <laughs> Just for these little ones, I reckon this is going to do the trick very nicely. Bear in mind when you're putting it in, it's going to sink. So make sure you do have it sitting a little bit proud at the edges. And that'll allow it to sink in. And I've got to say, I'm pretty impressed with that. There we go. So a little bit there as well. There you go. Bit more of a patch up. that there, put that there for the moment, put some milk in here so I can have a coffee, put it all in, mind and take that up, so that is another way you can fill cracks, we'll finish that right off when I finish this strop. Now with the strop, we've got that temper came up beautifully. I just don't know 
I quite like that actually. Double sided tape. Will you not go outside? That's it, the secret's out now. I used to give them that special little tin down there for them because <clears throat> those three that were here before, because the other chickens won't let them in the coop and they have to sleep outside. So that was their treat. But seems to me the word's out. Come on, you can go outside too. There we go. Now, it's trying to figure this out. I think that's pretty good there. <clears throat> okay, so I'm going to go rough cut this on the bandsaw. Then we'll go over to the router and finish that, by which time my milk should be finished. And then I can relax and have a coffee. Has she got? Hey, would you get out of there? It's worse than Bob, I tell you. Come on. Only you. Come on. Here you go. You gotta go. Yep. Come on, let's go. You're not in trouble. You're just not wanted. Go on, go. Okay. There we go.
Okay, so now over to the router. And get the shape happening. Okay, there it is. Put these up. Gee, that French curve's come in handy, but I, I use the longer one more than any of the others, I think. Oh, oh dear, I don't think that was a good idea. And I'll keep keep that um, just because I want to make another one. Get this sticky stuff off quick. If you leave it on there for too long, it is an absolute nightmare to get off. Nearly all off. There you go. <laughs> this uh, sandalwood is so nice. I got this, oh maybe five years ago on a bush trip I did. And I've still got some logs of it outside. Oh, it's just, it is so well behaved. It just doesn't move. The machine's gorgeous, beautiful finish. They have to be one of the stablest timbers I think I know. Okay. So I've got to cut that off, which I can do in a minute. And we'll put leather on there. So, 
Oh, I know. I'll just see if I can find something. If not, it doesn't matter. But if I've got it, it'll be nice. Um, no, I think it's out the back. Wait a minute. I'll just just have a look out here. Doesn't look like I can find it. I'll find it later. I was looking for a bit of um, brass angle. I know I've got some. I just thought there was a length of it out there, but. Evidently not, so it doesn't matter. We'll just do what we're going to do anyway. Um, leather, leather, leather. Okay, I'll put green suede on this one, I think. <whistles> I'd better have a chat first. And, oh, i tell you what I'll do first. I'll put some milk in my coffee, then I can have a chat. How about that? And double chopped Tim Tam biscuit. And where's my special stirring implement? There you go. I don't know what crawls on that at night, and I don't care. She likes you better than Thea, he wants to charge her a fee for it. <laughs> oh, I was meant to get, be going over to Theo's today, but my, my day out had been cancelled. And I actually, I work on the music stand. For those who have been following the saga for I don't know how many years, look, I actually sound, sanded in the triple clef. Just... Just so you know, I, I still am doing some work on it. I've just got to fill that with resin now. So that's, that's it. I actually did some work on the music stand. Oh, let me see. Let me see. Oh, that bit looks good. So uh, that bit can go there, and I'm guessing. There you go. Can do that one. Actually, I don't know. I might. I'm feeling good. I don't, no, no, I won't. I've got, I've got some lovely orange over there. I could do orange with. I could do black. Oh! Oh! Look at that big spider. No, I think I'll stick with the green. Where's the, where's the spider go? Oh, there he went out the door. Boom, boom, boom.
There we go. I'll put that away soon. Oh, there it is. Ah. Oh. Yeah, if you're new to the channel, please, if you'd like, hit the subscribe button. I'd appreciate that. A lot of these videos I'm doing today, I'll actually post as separate videos so you don't have to go through the entire thing to find it again. Uh, what I want to do is soften it. This is very, very sharp along here. So I just want to soften that a bit with um, a round over bit, which we might go over and do. And also this one too. No, we'll put the leather on first. I'm trying this new stuff. Um, normally I always contact cement, but I haven't got any. And I just opened this cartridge up of Sally's, I think, sticks anything to anything. Is what it's called. I'm just looking for a bit of, oh, a little bit. A bit, of, bit, of, bit of polycarbonate so I can spread it out. There we go. That'll do. Have you noticed there are less Tim? Yeah, like I tell you, this is what gets me. Speaking of which, regular Tim Tams, you get 11. Because they're ordinary Tim Tams, that's dark. But then you get the double chocolate, you only get nine in there. Costs the same amount, get less. And now they've got all these boutique ones, real flash and fancy ones. And they're twice. I, I'll empty the fridge whilst I do it. Uh, okay. Boom, ba -dum, boom. Where are we up to? Oh, absolutely. Doesn't matter, you could use hard grain or works well. Didn't you see that? Music stand off camera. Oh, wait a minute. Or is that? When I was doing it on camera. There you go. There you go. It's getting there. It's another thing I found when I was cleaning out my shed. Finished jobs I've got to do. Okay. Yeah, so this stuff's called Hold Up. Good name, isn't it? I um, broke the dust uh, uh, main port on the table saw the other day when I was when I was cleaning up, and I needed something that was plas plastic to metal, and um, I was told this will do it. I don't know. It it held all right. I don't know how this is going to But seeing I've opened the cartridge, might as well use it, I suppose. Apparently you got 15 minute work, which should be more than enough. And they don't suggest you what I'm doing. They say get it straight out of the gun. 
I want to get a good coverage. That's one. Okay. And so this one. Get all this out in one pot. I'm going to be happy. Well, I'm going to be happy anyway because happiness is a choice. Isn't it? Here you go. I'm getting all philosophical again. All right. Put that in there. Wipe that on there. Put this on there. Squeeze. How did that do that? Same for this. Okay. Cut it off. Put some tape over that. Don't lose the rest of that. There and this can definitely go in here. I'm going to slice up the side, I'll just spin this around. This so it's nice and flush. Now I'm going to cut that because I'm going to to cut this on the saw to square it up. That, that'd be okay. We'll do that in a bit. Let's 
cut across there. This is why I would have liked that, that, that bit of us just to lay in the top. Haven't got it, so don't worry about it. I can always put it in later on. And I'll just go and, what's that doing? Did that come? That, you, that didn't do a darn thing, did it? <coughs> the camera moved, but I'll show you what I did on this one anyway. So I'm just going to trim the leather to the width of the drop, just using a knife. this off. And do the same on the other side. Let me catch up. Go and put some socks on, Trevor. Time about the music stand. I was giving the Theo to finish, but he declined. <laughs> now, I was hoping to catch up with him today, but didn't happen. So next week, next week. That nice. Oh, look, all my grandsons are, are saying good day to me. Good day, Madison. How are you? Lovely to have you to you. Give Dad a big hug and dribble on him. I hear you've been eating little pikelets. There we go. It's straight now. I never catch up. Um, oh, I look, Michael, I don't use honing paste. Um, I just, uh, you know, honing paste is fine. Most of mine, I don't use anything on them. I just um, use just the leather and it seems to, to work fine. But if you've got stropping paste, use stropping paste. There. Want a bit of glue there. Here we go. Whack a bit in there. Oh, that should be done now. But straps really are great. They're, um, as you can tell, they're easy to make. And I think they come in so handy just for. When you've sharpened your chisels, give them a quick strop or a knife or anything on it. And it just, it's, look, it's, it's a grey area. 
partly I don't think it actually sharpens, but what it does do, it cleans all the micro gunk your blade that you can't see, and therefore it will cut better. So. There we go. That's it. Good. Keep that one clean. Oh! G'day, Joe from the USA. Welcome from Australia. Yeah, I've got, um, oh, I've got an old, uh, yeah, barber strop up in the top shed, which is hanging off from the bench. Drop carving chisels on sometimes. Um, I used to use it just for knives, but it's quite handy to have. And you can get a lot of drops nowadays. You can buy on eBay. Don't know how they're not that expensive, so I guess if they're mediocre expensive, that's a good thing to I'm going to clean this off, and then we'll run a router around, around, around it. Oh, heartburn, there you go. Yeah, oh, look, I'd use, I'd use um, contact adhesives, Michael. Generally, it's just I didn't have any. <laughs> Normally, I've got it here, but I haven't. And as I said, had that stuff which I opened for a different job, but I might as well use that. And it should be, should be okay. Contact cement, I thing I like about contact cement is you know that when they join together, they stuck. So, yeah, in that regard, cement's good. I've tried the um, water based contact cement too, that's pretty alright as well. Okay. In a minute. Um, <laughs> See you, Trev. Yeah, it was sliding a bit, wasn't it? Tim Tam Cam. <laughs> yeah, I tell you what, if they could come and use the camera when they came in, it'd be good, Daryl. Okay, now let's go over and just see this one here. There you go. Um, yeah, we'll go. Oh, got to move my eggs now. We'll go and put a rounded edge on them and then drill a hole in them. And that then will be done. Um, let's move my eggs. I don't drop any of them. So we'll be in deep doo doo. Not only from the, the missus, but also the chickens. Isn't it marvellous? It doesn't matter what area of the shed you want to be in wherever you put stuff that's where you want to be oh 
Okie dokie. Let's go over there. Oh, buffalo. Up. Hopefully the spider's found a nice home. It's not going to run up my arm. Um. I hope that stopped dripping now. Well worth putting that down on the ground. I obviously didn't intend using this one today. But that's the way it goes. Just shut that before the goose comes in here. I'm getting everyone else coming in. Ba -da -bum. Justin Johnson, if anyone follows cigar box guitars or whatever, Justin sent me one of his stickers. You should check him out if you like blues. Oh, brilliant guitarist. Heck of a nice guy too. All right, now. Let me just blow this out. The only initiator that's the cheapest router table you can buy. It cost me two dollars. All right. Now, where are we? Let's just see what's happening. It's not plugged in. It is plugged in. It's not plugged in. All right. That'll do. Swing that around. Can you see that saw? I'll just swing the saw around. And cut this one off. So it's nice and square.
Hopefully the leather doesn't cause any problems. Which it did, that's all right, we can trim that. Leather just caught, caught. So I'll just that and we should be good to go. There you go, nice and square. Go back and cut this out or put the router over. There we have it. I think I'll put a hole in that one and a hole through there, which I might go and get a drill and do. And now, I'll well, think of it. If I don't do it now, it'll never get done. It's ju just the way things are. And I might put a leather thong in there too, just so it can be hung up. There you go. That's the best way. And when you touch it, Michael, it's dry. You don't think about it. As soon as you put it in the whack. It, um, hence the name contact cement. Okay. So I can then hang that one up on the nail. Not exactly central, but it will do.
there was a store somewhere and it was, it was going out of business or what, but it had all these old leather shoelaces. And I thought, what a great idea for making hooks and what have you, or hanging leads. There you go, that can hang up, and this one can go on a nail. Oh, now, what can I finish it with? What have I got? There you go, this stuff all that. Bit of mineral oil. Food safe and everything else. Good day, Earl. Good to hear from you, mate. And thanks for dropping by. <laughs> These, um, yeah, they're not. They're not ones that I would sell. They're just for my own use in case you reckon they're a bit rough. And that's okay. But it will give you an idea of things you can make. There you go. That's one. This one will come up a tree. Once I put a bit of oil on this. Oh, there's a biscuit. I love that. That is just gorgeous timber. I don't know if you can see the. Really is not. So that's it. That's how you make a strop. Oh, I'll tell you what, we'll do that other bit of shellac again. Make sure we got that all nice and good. this oil off. They're, they're just handy things to have whether you know you um, have it in the kitchen or on the barbecue or in your workshop. Once you start using them you'll find you'll use them a lot. I don't know where I'm going to put that one now. There you go. Fit in there like that. And this one, I've got to go and deliver as soon as I finish the stream. So, Randall, it's on its way, mate. Let's get that barbecue going. Oh. Now, what are we going to do? That's right, we're going to finish this off. There's a trick with sandpaper too. If you want to get the most out of your sandpaper, you get a square and you do fold it in half, that's fine because you can use both sides. But once you fold that in half, that side destroys that side. So, 
if you just rip it down one quarter like that and then you can fold that to there that to there that to there you'll get all four surfaces you can use and you don't have any wastage which is really a good thing Okay, now I've done that, I'll just hit it with an orbital and we'll see how we're looking. And we're not clogging the disc up because we've already done it with a hand sander that's got a couple of minute ones you can just see them glinting which i might go back and do later and i'll hook in and do this one actually let's see how badly it clogs up the disc few marks on it. Go and get another disc because that one's worn out. Yeah, that's cactus. And remember, do the whole board, not just here, or else you'll end up with a dip in it. Again, that's filled the big hole that we had, but I've still got a little crack here and a little one here, which I'll do with the um, uh, pyro pen. I mean, if, if not, you can use the soldering iron, it's just good. But to me, that um, I'm happy with that, it's successful because it's not coming out. It does take a fair bit of work, but if you've got something that's going to get wet, I mean, shellac itself uh, is not real good. It's hygroscopic, which means it absorbs water. So you've got to be careful of that. But it will be a heck more resistant to moisture than um, wood-based putty. Uh, wood-based. Water-based putty. So there you go. Give it a go. Ah. Oh. No, you're not coming in. Can you hear them crabbing on the outside there? I'm not going there, Michael. 
Re music said, I meant not fair working on it off camera. I've waited over a year to watch you finish it. <laughs> it's been over a year. I don't know. That's got to be three years. Maybe four years. I'll ask the yeah, we'd know. I've got no idea. But I will. When I work on it, I'll... <laughs> Just for you, Tebow, I will do it live. There we go. All right. Yeah, kangaroo thonging's nice. Oh, this is this has got to be buff. It's really tough stuff. Well, it was boot laces. So who knows? Who knows what it was used for? So the long ones are good for knife. Yes. Um, where's the knife? Oh. Yeah, if you've got a, a long one, you can just do that with a, a knife and you can get a nice, good run with that. Whereas with a chisel, very hard to keep that going. So the larger one is really good to get a chisel on and just a couple of licks. That's starting to come up. It's not a, not a good sign. So we'll see how it goes. I mean, I've rushed it, so we'll, we'll see tomorrow. Tomorrow she should be nice and um, hard. But in the meantime, this one, yeah, a friend of mine's got a um, barbecue truck. I don't know if you call it a barbecue truck or whatever, but oh, the beef that comes off of it is just to die for. Matter of fact, I think I'm going to shout myself a... Turn the compressor off. Shout myself a beef roll this afternoon. They are just the nicest things. Ah, dear, oh dear. Ah. So that is about it. I think I did everything I said I was going to do. The glue up's gone well. So I can pull those out of the clamps tomorrow. Try the Galac way of filling... Uh, cracks and splits and timber. Very happy with the results, actually. I really am impressed. As I said, it takes a lot longer than just whacking a bit of bog in um, with filler. But if it's something that's going to be possibly exposed to a bit of moisture, or the other thing, if it's a piece of furniture you've done and you're going to French polish it, I would um, fill it with shellac, and that's the way I do it. I, I wouldn't do it the way I normally French polish. French polishing, you just take so much time to to fill it before you can start bodying it. But um, doing it that way, and then just finishing it off. What we didn't try, which no, it's gone. I was say, we could have tried a scraper on it, just a card scraper. That might have done. Could do that again later. Don't know. Uh, possibly I'll be back on in a couple of days, Monday in Australia, which will be Sunday north of the equator. And that's my intention. I've got no idea what I'm going to do. But anyway, it's just good to get on there and do something, isn't it? Uh, Justin, what is your opinion on Rubicon Monocoat? Thinking of using it on a mango wood table. I have never heard of it. So that is my honest answer. Never heard of it, can't comment. I don't know. <laughs> Give me something easy like shellac or wipe on poly or um, uh, as isolac or something, but yep, no. Nope. Never heard of it, Justin, so I'm sorry, can't help you with that one. Well, that's it. It's nearly four o'clock and I've been drawing on for two and a half hours. Thank you everyone for listening and putting up with me and putting your two bobs worth in and making it entertaining. Um, I really do enjoy just coming down here and having the communication, yeah, communication I have with the new people and the people that have been following me for um, a long time. So if you do like it and you're new, I'd really appreciate it if you could whack the subscribe button and hit the notification button. 
then you'll know when I'm on. And if you could be so kind as to ring me up and let me know I'm on, that would be good too, because I never know what I'm doing from one moment to the next. With that said, that just about wraps it up. So this is Steve pulling the shed door down and saying, remember to keep it sharp, but more importantly, keep it safe. Look after yourself, be kind to each other, and I look forward to having your company in the workshop at the workbench again very, very soon. As I said, Saturday, Sunday, yeah, about another three days I should be on. Might do another one in between time, just see how things go. I don't know, but take care, look after yourself, stay safe, and uh, yeah, look forward to seeing you very, very soon. Till then, God bless. Catch you later. I've got to work the buttons out on this thing. Um, there we go.